Okay. Well, it's December the 11th, 2021. We're going to talk with Daddy Papa, all who there is to you, Bill Cable Sr. today. You all want to come in here? Mm -hmm. huh? They might start over. Oh, they were yeah. They're still yapping. They're still yapping. But I thought they'd want to be in there. Dad, if any, any of these, and I'll, I, some of them, like, well, like we talked, I know you might not want to answer something, but if you do, just tell Pat, tell, give us a pass, and we'll talk about it later. Or, or not, we'll, we'll just go over it. First question is, uh, what comes to mind when you think about growing up in Clark? Oh, what comes to mind when you like growing up in Clark? Well, we had less than nothing. But we was happy with what we had. We made do. and uh, You didn't know you had less than nothing, right? Right. Right. We didn't know it at the time. We thought that was just the way it was. Yeah. You know. And, uh, but everybody was happy. In fact, I think we was happier back in them days than we were now. Right. Everybody had uh, would go to family dinners. And, uh, I mean, there would be 20, 30 people come, you know. Sure. Is that something you did every week? Yeah. Mamma Bailey, she always had uh, somebody on weekends, always. There's always somebody there. And, and, those, they, and they, those that don't know, Mamma Bailey was your grandma. Right. And uh, <laughs> I know the first time Lee went with me down there, They was going to fix breakfast. So Uncle Lid, Mamma told Uncle Lid to go out and get a chicken. And he went out and got this chicken and, of course, wrung his head off and got him all stripped and come in. And Lee said something about chicken for breakfast. She never heard of fried chicken for breakfast. <laughs> Well, Ed said, yes, chicken for breakfast. <laughs> and after that, he always called her old chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that was her name to him, old chicken. <laughs> he pretty much had a name for everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Kind of like Uncle Donald did. Yeah. Did, did, as a kid, what did you love to do, or what? What uh, I know, when you grew up, there was a lot of work done by kids on the well, oh, or whatever. So, yeah. Was it was there something that you liked to do that was you know that you were allowed to do or whatever? Fishing or hunting or hunting was most thing you know, rabbit hunting. Yeah. And uh, I never did get into to fishing too much. Hunting, I love to hunt. What what kind of gun did you have or did you hunt with a gun? Uh, 410. 410. Okay. 410 and I had, uh, Dad had that little rifle. Did you go with Papa Fred? Yeah. You went with Dad? Anybody else go with you hunting? Oh, yeah, Uncle Donald, he'd go if it was going to be quail hunting. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't care too much about the rabbit. <laughs> I know he did in his older years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cause, he'd cause, go out and come back with a pickup load. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, he's, he's 
dead and gone now, but I know he did a lot of it from the pickup driving down the gravel yeah. road, too. <laughs> there was lots of rabbits then. There was. <laughs> yeah, rabbits were thick. What, was there anything else? I mean, I don't know. When you were growing up, was there any kind of sports that, or anything that... I mean, when what well, what what did kids do when you were growing? Did you play tag? Did you play hide and seek? Or yeah, all you played was tag or hide and seek or uh... or tip the outhouse. Yeah, <laughs> tip the outhouse. Or or slide your little sister across the ice in a crate. <laughs> yeah, these are more stories. <laughs> Jimmy Smith told that story. Uh -huh. Who? Jimmy, Jimmy Smith told well, us about. I, I don't think I heard about the the sliding your sister across the ice on the in the crate. On the pond. Who? Jimmy Smith said you guys put Aunt Dolores in a crate and were sliding oh, yeah. her across the ice until you guys started hearing the ice crack and thought it might not be a good idea. Yeah. And then Jimmy Smith also told about you trying to take the horse inside the house when your mom and dad were in town. Yeah. Well, me and Jimmy Smith got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he was, uh, uh, his family was very religious, you know. Yeah. And uh, me and him would get under the front porch and smoke. <laughs> we got the, we got the leaves on fire too. <laughs> <laughs> did, so did so I think did you? We got in trouble for that. That's why I was going to ask you if you got in trouble for that <laughs> one. Was he your best friend when you were a kid? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Smith and I was pretty close when we was real young. You know. Yeah. Now he's Kathy Kelsey's uncle or dad or he's Kelsey's uncle. uncle, I guess. Yeah. And and Jimmy was and I'm asking for the camera, Jimmy was Ann Opal's son? Yes. And who was his, her, his dad? Who was who was Jimmy's dad? Ann Opal's husband. Uh Floyd. Floyd. That's what I thought, but I wouldn't. I wanted to. I wanted to ask yeah. you. So, and Aunt Opal was Papa Fred's sister. Yes. So, what do you remember most about your teenage years? My teenage years, I worked. Where did you work? I worked for uh, Uncle Klein. Doing what? Well, at first, <clears throat> he hauled lime for the farmers, you know. And he didn't have a spreader truck. He had a sp spreader he pulled behind the truck. Okay. And you had to shovel it in there. Okay. And we, I was up there shoveling that lime in there. Sometimes you keep up, sometimes you could. You know. And this was in Clark? Yeah. But How old were you? area. How old were you? Oh, God, I don't know. 14, 15. And I did that for, I don't know, we done that a couple of years. Then he, then he finally got a lime truck with a bed and a spreader. And so I graduated to being a truck driver. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uncle Klein treated you well, didn't he? Yeah. And then Uncle Klein also had, after that, he bought trucks that, uh, to haul grain with. Okay. Of course, we wasn't old enough to drive them, but we, when it came dark, we drove. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Another radar. Explain your relationship to Uncle Klein. Who's he? My Uncle Klein was my uh, mother's brother. Klein Bailey. Klein Bailey, yes. Mom was Wilma Bailey. Right. 
So when you was 14, then a, a, a license was required to drive? Yes. Okay. Now, I, when I become 16, I got my chauffeur's license. I never had a driver's license. Never had a regular driver's license. Nope. I always had a chauffeur's license for driving the truck. And that's all I have ever had. Okay. What's your best memory of, of Granny White? Matt, uh, our, for the camera again, Wilma Bailey, your mom. Yeah. What's your favorite memory of Granny? Oh, good grief. Well, I don't know. There's, there, there's several, you know, you don't, you sure. really can't pinpoint one. Yeah, that, well, that, and that's a good thing. Yeah. So, uh, just tell us one. Yeah. Well, one of the things that, of course, it pretty much sticks in your mind is when Lee and I got married, we took her, their car. And it was a pretty new car that they bought. So you're saying you took it without asking? No. Oh. No. <laughs> we, we knew, they knew we was going to Clark. Okay. That weekend. And they didn't want to go for some reason. Okay. So instead of us coming home, we went to Arkansas. Okay. And nobody knew it. Okay. And, uh, of course, we didn't come home that night. Didn't come home that day. And they, uh, Mom and Lester figured it out pretty much. They said, oh, so they both had to get a ride to work that day. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, Lester worked down in North Kansas City. Okay. And Mom worked over on 31st Street uh, at an awning company. Okay. And uh, so, anyway, <clears throat> when we got home Monday night, or Tuesday, I guess it was, We pulled up in front and we sent her. We didn't know her to yell out and go in or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, mom come out and she looked at us. And so we thought, well, we just want to get out, you know. And she said, where have you kids been? I said, well, mom, we decided to take a little trip. Well, where'd you go? We went to Arkansas. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so she was very happy. Good. And, uh, of course, her and Lee was like that back then. And uh, so it was Lester. Lester was good. And tell Kimber, what'd you do in Arkansas? Uh, yeah. What'd you do? Uh, we got married. Yeah. <laughs> I think Benton. you might have said that, but I wanted to... Yeah, we went to Bentonville, Arkansas. Bentonville, Arkansas. And we got married in front of a judge. And the uh, uh, the lady working in there with the judge, she she stood up with us and uh, was a witness. Okay. And so that was the first time. We also seen one of the first stores that... Uh, Walmart ever had. Oh, is that right? Yes. And it was just nothing but a drugstore like type. Okay, a drugstore. Yeah. Okay. Why did you go to Arkansas to get married? Why didn't you do it in Missouri? It didn't need no uh, testing. You know, we used to have to get a blood test yep. and all that stuff. But Arkansas, you didn't have to. Nope. If you just go in down there and tell them you wanted to get married, because cousins was married. I was, <laughs> thinking, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. You know what? I said because cousins were marrying cousins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? 
the following question here is is what was most important to her? What would what was most what was something that was important to Granny to Granny White? Did, and I mean, uh, I, I'm sure from our memories, family was important, and you know. But did she have any? Um, um, Anything that you know that she liked, like sewing, or you know, was there something that you know when you think of that, something that would make you think of Granny, whether it was cooking or or whatever. Well, Granny was a good cook, but uh, sewing, I guess, you know, she did do some sewing. Yeah. That's about it. Oh, okay. What's your best memory of Papa Fred, Fred Cable? Oh my God, he was a worker. And uh, he always had that laugh for you. And he was he was strict with us kids, but never real strict, you know. You know, not to the point that we're, he's going to get your butt beat. You never got abused. <laughs> no. No. And uh, when I was born, that's what they tell me now. We lived, we were in between the tracks or over or at Clark. Do you remember where Bill Asbury lived? I do. That's where I was born. Right? In that house? Yeah, mm -hmm. that house. Okay. I had I thought that it was a house that was gone. It was farther down. But okay, yeah. I don't. That was the last. I house. remember that house. Yeah. And uh, of course, back then, you know, uh, you worked for whoever you could with. Uh, on the farm, Dad help, always was helping. If, some, if somebody on yeah. a certain day needed help building fence, yeah. that's where you went. If yeah. the next day somebody else needed help digging a ditch, that's where you went, right? Right. And uh, so there's far, two far, a farmer and another guy come by and said, Fred, can you work today? And he said, yeah, but he said, I just got a newborn. And I've got to get some wood in here. i got to get some fuel. He said, you go on and have your breakfast. We'll take care of it. And there was a coal car train. <laughs> and they left the train, left the horses there in the wagon. And they went over and crawled up on that boxcar with the loaded coal and they went to throw coal off. <laughs> and I guess they throw coal off and they dad said they had enough coal to burn it all winter. <laughs> <laughs> then after the train left they took the team and the wagon went over and loaded it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Back to the good old days. Mm -hmm. Uh, back in the good old days. Yeah, back in the good old days. And that was, you know, he wasn't the only one who done that. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. What do you think was important to him? Just like I asked you about Granny, what was... It, it, it sounds like, uh, to me, providing for his family. Absolutely, yeah. He could always he could always provide. As far as I know, he did it. Yeah. If either Granny or Papa and uh, for. Those listening don't know would be Grant, and I'm, I'll ask about all four Granny and Papa, Grant, Papa, Fred, and Granny, Zena, Granny White, Papa Lester. If they had a message to give any of us grandkids, of course, I know we're all grown now, and we might not be the smartest 
ones around, but I think my brothers and sisters are pretty smart when it comes to a lot of stuff. What, you, what kind of message would, would they give to grandkids? What would they have to say maybe about, you know, if one thing in life, or maybe what, what did you learn from them? Maybe, you know, what would they try to teach you growing up? Well, I think they would just teach you on uh, work ethics and uh, honesty and that side, of, that kind of stuff, you know. You can't go wrong there being honest and working right. hard. How did you meet mom and know that she was the right one, the woman that you wanted to marry? How did I meet her? Well, she worked at uh, a little cafe down on Broadway. Of course, there didn't put none of the interstate there, you know. That was just Broadway and Truman Street and all that, you know. And across the street, there was a truck stop. If you wanted to call it the truck stop, it was a restaurant, or I mean a station, had diesel fuel, gas, and whatever, and parking out and back, and then around there, you know. And she got a job over at that, that little restaurant across the street. That's where everybody ate, was that little restaurant there. Well, there was another one down the street, but that's where most everybody ate. And anyway, Helen Hurley was my first date. I took her out one night. Well, the next day I was gone. You know, I was working for old Klein. And when you leave with, back then, it was called Wildcatters. And when you left, you didn't know when you was coming back. Because you might get to New York and you might go to Florida, and Florida you might go to California, or you might go to Chicago, or wherever, you know. Well, anyway, when I come back, there was the guy that uh, Jim Hurley had a little old Chevrolet truck with a single axle trailer. And uh, he was running back and forth to Chicago for some freight company. And uh, so anyway, he had latched on to her, Helen. I didn't make any difference to me. I was only out with her one night anyway, you know. And uh, so uh, I, was, I was sitting over at, uh, at the restaurant. And of course, she would was the only waitress. And if you wanted something, if you wasn't sitting at the bar or wherever, you know. And uh, what really, one night they had a birthday party for one of the drivers. And the drive, drivers just come in and wish him a happy birthday and have a piece of cake and stuff. Now, Uncle Klein, he was was dressed up, like, I don't know, he had a wig on and a bandana around his head. <laughs> <laughs> he was a man. He was always doing stuff like that. Okay. But anyway, I was sitting at the bar, with my back to the bar and leaned back against it. And Lee came over. And, of course, we'd been talking and went out of time, too. And she came over and give me a big kiss. Uncle Klein hollered out, all right, cut that stuff out. That <laughs> 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 was him. And, uh, but that's really the way I met her. Okay. And from then on, it was just, that was it. And Uncle Klein's daughter, Georgianne, sent the picture of that birthday party and mom kissing dad she had a picture of it. Uncle Klein back then was good, and people were good about taking photographs, and sent that to Dad. And I brought that over to Dad just okay. here a while back. Okay. So he has he has a picture of it. 
Well, of course, that made us jump from Clark to Kansas City, and I know you, if I'm not mistaken, you came to Kansas City to go to work for Uncle Klein, who had already come up here and drive a truck for him, right? Yeah. And the wildcatter was you driving a truck, and so did did he not, you were just wildcat loads, in other words, You'd haul a load to New York, and you didn't know what you were going to haul back until you got re- until you got out there. No, nope. you'd find something while you were there. Well, right? What you did was went through a broker. Okay, there was brokers in every town okay. where there was trucks. So you did use a broker, and there was a broker. We always went to Jersey City when we would go to New York. Jersey City truck stop, and there was a guy there that took that did loads and we just go in there and tell him, Well we're we're here, we're well, we need a load and he's okay and he finds you a load someplace, you know. Okay. Might not be where you wanted to go, but <laughs> but you was gonna make a, make money. Yeah. Well you didn't take the load if it didn't make right make money. Yeah. But you were working. Yeah. I should say, but you, oh, yeah. you work, that's how you found your work. Back then, what did a load pay from, oh, like from Kansas City to New York or something like that? I don't know, two or three hundred dollars. <laughs> it wasn't much. Of course, you bought fuel for five, ten cents a gallon. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and that, our that biggest was expense it. was the turnpike, uh, the Pennsylvania turnpike. Still and, is. And that was before the before the real interstate system was right. up. Yep. And you got on it, uh, what is it, Pittsburgh? New Stanton. Huh? New Stanton. Yeah. Pittsburgh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you had to get off at, uh, where was it? Oh. Carlisle? Carlisle. That was the end of the turnpike right there. And you got back on Highway 24, or 224, rather. And you get out there in them mountains, head from New York. <laughs> and they'd have them uh, passing lanes going up some of them mountains, you know. Some of them slow trucks would get over and you'd go by them or, or push. <laughs> I pushed a lot of trucks. Did you? Yeah. Be going up the hill. They'd be just creeping along, and of course, you could some places you couldn't pass. You'd just creep up to them and ease up, and you knew when you'd touch them, and then man, you'd give it to her and <laughs> take them to the top. And most of them, when they got to the top, there was always a pull off. And most of them, when they got to the top, they would pull over if they could and let you back. Okay. They'd wave at you and thank you. And you would, I'd go on, you know. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I pushed a lot of trucks. <laughs> how, how did you, did, did you choose to, well, the question is, how did you choose your career and what was your favorite part of it? But, I mean, did, did Uncle Klein introduced you to driving a truck pretty early on yeah, the farm, right. so yeah. so you decided early that well, that's something you wanted to do. Right. Well, that was something I could do. Something I wanted. Yeah. And uh, he had the equipment to do it with. When he come home from service, he bought a bought his first truck over the road. And uh, I don't know, it just it just started blooming from there. Right. What was it that you really liked about driving a truck? I was on my own. Independence. I was independent. I was out there by myself. Nobody could tell me what to do or what not. <laughs> okay. I guess and that's then, what, I okay. guess that's kind of where I get that. A little and bit. then you met mom. <laughs> 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 and, <I met Mom. laughs> and then you had five kids. <laughs> but now, Mom was never, when I was driving, after, you know, after we got married, she never was 
was uh, against it. She oh. never complained about she you being gone. She never complained. No. Uh -uh, never. Did she ever go with you? She went with me about three or four times. Uh, she didn't take to that truck anymore, but, you know, rut being out on the truck. I took her to California. I took her, took her to North Dakota. And that was a mess, too. We got a burn that was 38 below zero all oh, night. When we got a burn, I got that old truck, and I thought, oh, hell, it'll never start. To <laughs> Ain't no way it'll ever start. So there was a garage there, pretty close to this hotel where we was going, and it worked on drugs and stuff. And I went over there, and I said, is there any chance? It was late. You know, about five or six o'clock, closing time. Right. I said, is there any chance I can get in here and get a service? Well, not tonight. You can't. We're ready to get home. Well, I'd sure like to get my truck serviced. Well, we can do it in the morning. I said, well, is there any way you can leave a truck set in? I don't want somebody to steal them out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, we got plenty of room. We could bring it in. I said, okay, well, go ahead and service it. And that was the cheapest rent you could pay. You sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure it was. It was that next morning, they had no trouble starting. <laughs> <laughs> Tell about the story you taking Mom to California, and you had to go through Death Valley. Oh. Through the desert, through death. Valley. Well, you went through the cross through the desert from yeah. Vegas, from Vegas into L.A. Well, yeah, we went from uh, L.A. to Vegas. Oh, okay. And where we was at, actually, we was in Bakersfield. Okay. And then we come up to Barstow, and then from Barstow across to to, to Vegas. Anyway, when we got to Bar. Back then, we didn't have thermocakes. All you had was what they called a bunker and blower. And in this bunker, you had a, the front of the trailer is about that much room that was blocked off, and you put ice uh, in there. Blocked ice. Yeah, blocked ice. And on top of, up on the front of the trailer, they had a, a Briggs and Stratton engine with the blower inside the truck and uh, it would pick up that cold air and throw it to the back. Well, I had to ice up when I got to there and because I was going to hit the desert and you wanted to make sure you had plenty of ice. And when I did, I took two 50-pound chunks of ice and put the floorboard and Lee like to have a bitch. What are you doing? I said, well, I want to kind of keep this thing a little bit cool going out across here. Well, she thought that was crazy. You know? <laughs> well, when we left Barstow, we got out to, to a little place they call Baker, California. That's one of the hottest spots in California. Right on the California Nevada line, right? Yeah. And uh, so we got out through there and had the windows up and and, and them old Mack trucks they had a vent that you pushed out, you know, and then they had two vents on each corner, had a vent on each corner. So you would let a vent down and push that uh, vent out on the hood to where that air would come in and hit that ice, you know. We was running down the road and she said, well, I'll tell you one thing, this ain't doing any good. I said, well, roll your window down. She rolled her window down and took her hand out. Boy, I mean, she cranked it back up. <laughs> she said, I believe this is working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> my list says what made you successful at work, but I know it's because of your hard work ethic. Yeah. There's no mistake. All of, all of your children know that uh, and appreciate what you did for us working and, and we love you for that. 
difference. What did you believe about yourself that helped you? What do you believe about yourself that helped you to become and successful and deal with hard times? And I know you saw some hard times. You grew up during the Depression. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, like you said a minute ago, you guys didn't know you had anything. Right. But, you know, back then on the farm, we was rich. We just didn't know it. We had beef, we had eggs, we had uh, a butcher, a hog, if you wanted it, uh, you know. So uh, we were so poor, but yet we was rich. Because we always had food. We always had a big garden. Uh, what else do you want? I, I think that this boils down to learning how to live yeah. life and and, yeah, and, and and what to do, you know, tomorrow when, yeah. you know, when, when a problem arises, face it head on. Exactly. Did you know the depression was going on when, when it was Not happening? Not really. We didn't know. Yeah. We knew that uh, there was a a lot of people out of work and uh, a lot of people struggling and people would work for anything, you know. But then, you know, back then people would work. They'd dig a hole or whatever. How big was the farm that you lived? I mean, did Papo have much property when, when you were growing up, or did he just mostly work for other people? No, he was a sharecropper. A sharecropper? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, what, uh, what, what do you, what do you yeah, think what do you about? Wait, wait. about? Tell us. Well, I was thinking about one time when uh, I forget that man's name that owned the property, but he'd come by every once in a while because he owned two or three farms. And me and Harold Wayne was out in the garden or doing something, and he asked, where's your dad at? And Harold Wayne at that time had a little problem with his speech. He says, he's down in the Akadika fixing fence. He said, where? <laughs> <laughs> he says, he's down in the Akadika fixing fence. So he started to go off. He said, now, would you tell me one more time? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to hear that again. <laughs> And he, he told that every time he'd come around. <laughs> what was he trying to say? Les Padiza. Les Padiza, okay. <laughs> All right. He was in Les Padiza fixing fence. And, and Les Padiza is a plant that you mowed and fed right. the cows yeah. Right, and yeah. livestock, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, What, what, and I don't, I don't know the meaning of this words, brothers and sisters, you might help me out. What times in your life truly tested your metal? You mean T-T-L-E? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, when, when did it feel, was there a point in your life where you felt like you were up against something extremely hard, you know? He's got five kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know. Probably so many times that I just don't remember. Was there ever a time where you thought you weren't going to be able to provide for the family or? No, I don't think so. No? I could always uh, supply food and a place to live and And I, 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 Lee wanted me to get off the road, you know. And I would take a job, and it wouldn't pay enough, you know, to do anything. And it wouldn't be long, I'd be right back on that road. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd always go back to Uncle Clyde. It was usually a local driving job, though, yeah. right? Yeah. You still drove. Yeah. But uh, whenever I needed to, some steady work was paid while well, I'd go back to Uncle Clyde. <clears throat> now him and I, we didn't get along all the time. No? No. But I still worked for him, and he'd still keep me, but we'd get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get into it with Uncle Kenny? No. Never. That was uh, one of the nicest men you'd ever want him to meet. And did, did you work for Uncle Kenny? Did yes. you drive for Uncle Kenneth? I sure did. Okay, and you want to explain to everybody that might be watching this who Uncle Kenneth was? Well, Uncle Kenneth was my mother's sister's husband. And Evelyn. And Evelyn. And, uh, of course, I was driving for... Uncle Klein, and he was driving for Uncle Klein. Him, let's see, there was myself, Uncle Kenneth, Bill Bailey, and then once in a while, Uncle Klein would take a truck or something, you know. But anyway, Uncle Klein, Uncle uh, Kenneth decided he was going to buy him a truck. And I don't know how he done it, but he, he got him a truck and trailer. And he did very well with it. Uh, and, I mean, he, after years, you know, of course, he just had the one truck. And he did very good after years of, of driving. And uh, he uh, upgraded just like everybody else did. And I, of course, I was still driving for Uncle Klein. That's when we would get into it. Uh, he would give you some time off. He'd come in, and he'd say, well, I think you need to take this week off. Uncle Kenneth would? No. Uncle oh, Klein. Uncle Klein? Okay. Did that usually happen after you got into it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then... Uh, by the time you would think you was getting things up, you know, getting everything caught up, that's the time he'd give you the week off. And anyway, Uncle, Cly Uncle Kenneth had an uh, opening. He had a guy that drove for him and was going to quit. So I went, I went to him, I said, I want a job. He said, oh, I can't hire you from, from, from uh, Klein. I said, well, I want a job, and uh, I'll go tell him that I'm going to go to work for you. And he said, well, we'll go ahead, and we'll see how it works out. <laughs> he said, if he'll accept it, you got the job. And so he did, and Paul Klein didn't care. He had plenty of drivers. He owned his own shop and everything down in Kansas Avenue. And uh, so that was when I went to work for Uncle Kenneth. And uh, he was a good man to work for. If you done something, he gave, he, he took care of it for you. If you had anything, it, you come in on your truck and needed anything worked on. He he would say, uh, I'd say, uh, well, let's take that truck down there. This needs to be done. Then we'll take it down and tell them what you want. You're the one that knows what it is, not me. <laughs> so you take it to KW and tell them what you wanted. Kids will like, boy, they'd fix it. I drove for him for a long time. When did you when did you break off on your own? Uh, oh Lord. Well, I broke 
of, of, of I guess it's why we lived up here at uh, 4,000. Anyhow, and I bought a truck <clears throat> and a trailer from a guy down at park down there at Uncle Klein's. He was wanting to sell it. And uh, he was a good friend. And I told him, I said, boy, I'd sure like to have that truck, but I don't have any money. He said, that ain't much of a problem. <laughs> he said, I'll sell it to you. We'll get the paperwork. And he said, I'll sell it to you. And I forget now what my payments was. It wasn't my too much. Of course, back then, you know, a hundred dollars was a lot of money. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, I think I made two or three trips with it. Come in one weekend and we was going to Moberly because I didn't load till Monday. I had a run and I was loading on Monday, load the meat, going to uh, New York, uh, Swift. And uh, so we went down there. Well, in the meantime, well, Uncle Kenneth, or Uncle Klein, if he had a, a load he had to load and he didn't have a truck, he would take my truck and go on. He knew it was okay, you know, go load it, then come back. So we come home, and uh, that Monday morning I went down to get my truck to get ready to go load, and the truck wasn't there. The trailer was out there, but no truck. So I knew where it was at. I went in and I said, uh, uh, when are you going to have the truck back? When will it be back? He said, what truck? I said, my truck. I said, I know you got it. He said, no, I don't. I said, don't give me the. <laughs> I said, I, I got to go load, you know. He said, Bill, I don't have your truck. I said, come on now, Klein, I got to go load. <laughs> he said, I'm not lying to you. I said, well, if, I'm, if you're not lying to me, call the cops and tell them it's been stolen. <laughs> he just picked the phone up. Back then, that's all he had, you know, was the phone. He picked the phone up and dialed the cops and told them there'd been a truck stolen and... Uh, and that was the last we ever seen of that truck when I parked it. Well, see, I parked it on Friday, and we didn't come back till Sunday night, and I was down there Monday. So, like they said, they said, hell, it could be in Mexico cut up, you know. And that we never did see that truck again or hear from it. Was that the truck that you told that you just bought a brand new set of tools and put in there? No. I no? I don't think so. No. Okay. But anyway, the kicker was, of course, I had insurance, but I still had to make insurance payments. As far as the theft, it was covered. But if it found it burn up, it wasn't covered if I didn't keep making them payments. <laughs> How long did you have to make that payment? I had to make them payments for about, I don't know, three, three, three or four months. And boy, that, you think that ain't tough. <laughs> and, uh, of course, that trailer sat down there. And, uh, of course, he got, was mad enough to take the trailer back. No payment on it, you know. And then all I had was payment on the insurance. I didn't even have to make payment on the truck. And if it hadn't been for a guy like that, that was that good, I would have never made it. Hmm. That was tough. And that, that, that got me a foot in the door. And then... Uh, Uncle Klein had an old truck. It was a Ford. It had a push axle on it. <coughs> a V, it was a F8. Back, back then, an F8 
eight was a big truck, you know, pretty good yeah. sized truck. Well, I took that damn thing. It had a load to Seattle. So I said, yeah, I'll take it. It paid pretty good money. Shit, I thought I never would get to Seattle. <laughs> what was a push axle? Huh? What was a push axle? Well, it, it had your regular drive axle. Yeah. But it had a dead axle. Behind front. it. Yeah. Okay. In front. Oh, in front of it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep, and uh, oh, I thought I never would get to California or Seattle, rather. And then I was going to get this load at in uh, Washington apples, load of apples. Uh, I can't think of that team. I hardly remember that. Walk up. Walk Shaw or something, I forget now. Anyway, Highway 80 was closed, or 90, because of a snow slide. So I looked at the map, and I thought, well, oh, hell, I'd go around that. Mount, uh, what is the name of that mountain? Anyway, I decided to go up through there. What a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I went around corners. There wasn't room for, for a bicycle. <laughs> you get over just as far as you can get. I mean, as far as you can get. And that trailer would be right up against her. the rocks. And I finally got through that thing and down to there and then went, I forget what town it was going down into or hit 90 again. And I, when I got down there, I thought, man, oh man, if I ever live long enough to get through one of these again, I will never take a detour. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> but I did get around it. <laughs> this is five questions at one time at you. What do you remember about when each one of us were born? And you start with Brenda. Uh oh, start with Brenda. I was, we was in California, and I worked for Carnation as a milkman, which was a good job. You might think being a milkman wasn't, but it, I, I got pretty good pay. On down the line, I'm next. What do you remember about when I was born? Well, I do, but I don't think I was home. I think Brenda's up. Brenda and Brian. I don't remember. I know. So you was on a truck when I was born. You were oh, yeah. you weren't home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that was life. That was life. Yeah. And uh, now I was home for Brent. I was I had started out town and got to uh, I think Huntsville. I was going to stop her and pick up my driver, and they had called his house and told him that Lee went to the hospital. So I called and told him they'd have to cancel my load. I was going back. Mostly my wife just went to the hospital to have a job. And so I turned around and went back to Moberly. Okay. So I was there when he was born. Okay. She had it tough. She had it tough. What about when Brian was born? Brian? Yep. Well, he was born right here in Kansas 
city, North Kansas City. Uh, he was born in North Kansas City? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Were you home? Were you there for that one? No. Nope. Oh, you were on the truck. The doctor come by and got help. Uh, come by and got uh, help. Okay. Uh, Lee go to the hospital. Oh, oh, she, he came to the house. Yeah. Okay. And, and picked her up and took her to the hospital. Okay. So. Was that Dr. Childers? Huh? Dr. Childers? Was that his name? No. I don't remember. Sorry. No, that's, that's fine. I don't. Trained, I was. Yeah. I don't remember. Oh, he was a good doctor. Yeah. He, so he was born in the basement too, just like I was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What, uh, how, how did they get a hold of you, let you know that, that he or, and I was born when, when you weren't there? How did, well, whenever I called home. And you called home every, in the middle of the week? Like, oh, yeah. When we, I mean, growing up, I know you called every Wednesday night. And, you know, we just thought that was great. But, so is that how you always did with mom or, yeah. you know, because back then you had, it was a long distance phone call and they were expensive. Yeah. Well, back then you would call home and you would call collect. And then Lee would say, who is it? Well, they would have to, they would tell who it was. Who? Well, where are they calling from? And then if she didn't want to talk to me, she didn't take the call. Okay. She knew where I was at, and that was it, you know. <laughs> and, but now, if she wanted to talk to me, she'd just take the, she'd accept the. See, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do too. Yeah. You'd call it that way, that way, uh, that was how we let. Um, let somebody know that you made it home safe. You'd call collect, yeah. and and uh, if, if it was just one collect call, they knew well they made it home. Yeah. yeah. If you called back again, something's wrong. <laughs> but okay. So, how about when Barbara was born? Do you remember anything about that? No, not really. I don't. You were born in Independence? At the sanatorium. At yeah. the sanatorium? Independence Sanitarium. Sanitarium? Oh. Sanitarium? Yeah. Sanitarium? Yeah. Isn't that where the tuberculosis patients? No, I think we lived in Independence then. Well, we're off of Kentucky, I think. I, I, yeah, I think we... Didn't we on off of Kentucky Road there? Yeah. But now, it wasn't the house we owned Right, I didn't think so. It was on a house, but we was renting it. Right. If I remember, Mom said Aunt Evie took her to the hospital. Yeah. Well, they, we was close to them. You know. They were close by? Yeah. When I was born, we lived at 4,000 Antioch. Just okay. Yeah. Okay. Next to the community center. Next to the community center. Is that where... We lived when I was born, was 4,000. So we were there for a while. Yeah. Or you and mom were there for a while. Yeah. And mom babysitted Kenny. Yeah. Well, she tripped. She was pregnant with Brian. Yeah. She, uh, he tripped her, not intentionally. Yeah. But he had done something and she was after him. She was going to beat his... You know what? <laughs> I'm the end. And uh, she was running him, chasing him. Well, she jumped. He jumped off the front porch. You know, she did too. And he was. She was gaining on him, so he fell down on the ground. And when he did, she tripped over him. Okay. And we didn't know what was going to take place there, but then she was okay. Okay. Now that 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 four thousand Antioch, that's apartments now. It's two. It's one below it and had one. Two of them. It was there. Okay, so did you live in the lower part or yes. the upper part? Lower. The lower. lower part. Yeah. Yeah, that was the big part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
big fenced backyard. Yeah. I I vaguely remember that. Was there was was the bottom? Did it include a basement or something? Yeah. Okay, that's I that's what I thought. So. Yeah. Were you ever scared about being a parent? Being a parent? Yeah. No. I don't know. What year did you go into the service? 45. Well, I went in in 44. But my grandma passed away. And they done a... What they call it? Emergency. Uh, a leave for death. Well, I had to prove that my grandmother help raise me and uh, that was grandma cable lizzie yeah liz and so uh, i said oh yes yeah and i wished i hadn't I never done it but i did and i wandered under the bridge uh but anyway then after that i forget how many days i got then I had to report back in, you know. And that was, I think that was in February 45. And that's when I went to Texas. And that's where I got my training. And then from there, Went to California, got on that train, and went to San Francisco and got on that boat. <laughs> USS Montauk. Yeah. Wasn't but what, five of them made or something? Yep, yeah, something like that. Five or six. What was your job in the Army? Signal Corps. Signal Corps, and what did you do? Well, I climbed poles. When I first got into it, it was right after the war. We were in the Philippines. And, uh, of course, they was testing everybody for what they could do and what they couldn't do, you know. And, uh, I was going to be a driver. Well, I knew how to drive a truck, so I was going to, I applied for a truck driver. So uh, this sergeant took me out to drive. Well, so we had one of them big old six buys and uh, showed me their gears on it. Okay, so we took off, and man, I just <laughs> slipped that sucker in gear like it was nothing. <laughs> He looked over at me and he said, Oh, my God, you can drive. <laughs> he said, I'm going to see how good you are on a Jeep. <laughs> I said, Okay. So we went back. We took his Jeep out, of course. And, but, of course, it wasn't no problem. He said, You're my driver. <laughs> but he helped me. I was in the Signal Corps and knew nothing about what I was signal for. I took Army uh, GI training to be a combat soldier. And he told me everything I, he could teach me and tell me. He said, let me tell you something. Get you this book. And he said, I want you to study it. I'm going home. But he said, I'm going to tell you. If you were take this book and study and learn it, there's nobody going to, nobody wants to do anything. He said, they're just here because they have to be. But he said, you can climb up. And I did. I did just what he said. And uh, bless his heart. Uh, when I left, I was a tech sergeant. And I went in as a private when yeah. I met him. 
Mm. Yep. Where did you go to boot camp? Uh, Camp Maxi, Texas. Camp Maxi, Texas. What time of year was it? Of course, Texas is hot. It was in February. February. Well, if anybody else has got more questions, jump in. But I'm going to continue with my list. Okay. And that's, that's good. I mean, I want to. I like to hear more about that too, Brent. Folks, I know you're interested in that. When you think about Brenda, how would you describe her to somebody? What what, what describes her? Just describe Brenda. You mean as of now? Sure. Well, she's the sweetest person you'd ever want to meet. She takes such good care of me. Anything I need, uh, all I've got to do is say something to her. And uh, I pretty much got it. Now, Brent, I'll enter him in. He's mean to you, though. <laughs> <laughs> he won't come do the leaves. <laughs> and he hardly beats me. I know. I know. He, hard, he hardly gives me any food. Yeah. <laughs> but now he does bring over some meatloaf and some la lasagna. It ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> and he's keep practicing. He's practicing. He's learning. Yeah. I told him he, he, he finally learned how to do it if he just keeps trying. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what about me? Well, you come along and, and uh, well, growing up, you, you, you uh, grew up fast. Uh, uh, we was in Moberly, I guess. And uh, I, I'm skipping the, the bottom years. Okay. Uh, but you went to school and did good in school. And, uh, of course, we wanted you to go to college. And we wanted you to go to junior college, naturally, there in Moberly. We said, we'd pay for it. So you went and enrolled and everything. And I don't know how long you went. Not too long. I, I went, I started my second year, but that was, was that what it was? Well, and so you decided to do something else. Yeah. But how would you describe me? I mean, you talk about, you know, about. I mean, like you described Brenda, the person she is. How, what, what, how would you describe me? Well, I'm just today. Huh? Today. Today. Let's talk to today. Oh my God! Well, you're you're, you're kind of like Brenda. Uh, and not to put any of the other kids down, but uh, you know, you uh, anything I need, I can pretty much rely on you to take care of it. Like any any mechanical or anything around the house that needs to be fixed or whatever, putting in a door or you know, and uh, so. And Brian, Brian's the same way. Brian does a lot. You may not notice it, but he's 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 done a lot. Uh, it's just like one time. I don't know why, why or whatever he decided. I don't know that uh, town and country car. I think Barbara mm -hmm. had it, didn't she? Mm -hmm. How'd you get it? I don't remember. Uh, well, anyway, I don't know. Mom must have said she would like that car or something. I, I don't know. Really, but anyway, oh, Brian and Jerry came over. We got it. We got it from Barbara. Yeah, you got it from Barbara. We got it from Barbara. Yeah, that's what I said. It was Barbara's, mm -hmm. and you got it from Barbara. Mm -hmm. 
And Mom said something about she liked that car. Uh, Brian and Jerry, I don't know why, for, for what reason, I don't know if he bought a new car or what. But anyway, they come over with that uh, town and country and gave it to us. Mm -hmm. They just drove it up the driveway, come in, we talked, and uh, at least Brian said, well, Mom, you uh, like that car down in the country, and she said, yes, I do. He said, well, here's the keys, it's yours. That was one of the things, you know, that made her happy. <laughs> and you Barbara? I'm sure you do. Describe Barbara. Oh, uh, I can't. Beyond words? <laughs> 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 I can't tell you. Indescribable. <laughs> no, Barbara. Well, Barbara, you know, she wasn't with us very long. And I mean. She moved away young. Yes. She, well, as soon as she got married, they moved. Yeah. Yes. But, um, the minute they got married, they was gone. Right. You know? But now Barbara was a good, good, good girl. She was always home to help mom. You know, she done a lot to help. And uh, how old was you? Fifteen or sixteen when you married? Seventeen. Seventeen. I knew it was right in there. Sixteen, seventeen. And she, you know where she got married at? Hmm? And, and they went to, uh, was it North Dakota? Roger had this job out there, uh, I did it. And, uh, my God, they was gone from then on. We went up there one time. I don't even remember the name of the town. Washburn. And then we all went to the Badlands. Yeah. And then we went, uh, well, we went all to them dams and uh, power plants. Remember, we went down in that power plant? Mm -hmm. On the Lake Sakakawea. Okay. Easy for you to say. <laughs> That's what I said, okay? <laughs> Lake Sakakawea Fills. That was, that Fills. was interesting. Yeah, Lake, so, Lake Sakakawea Fills partially from the Missouri River. Okay. That's where the Missouri River started. Yep. Right there. That was the head of it. Well, she can still hear us in there, but what, would you, what, what, what advice would you have for us today? Well, what, is there anything that you think that we need to know that? No. I think everybody has done real well. You may not have what you want or what you set out for, but you all have done very well for yourselves. And I don't know what else. I just don't know what else you can say. Good enough. We had a good example and we followed it. Some of us took a while to get on that track. But I won't tell anybody who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I know we all miss mom, but when you think about mom, how would you describe her to somebody? How would you tell her about what kind of person she was? Well, she was the sweetest lady you would ever want to meet. Sometimes you might not think so. <laughs> <laughs> but she was. <laughs> Only if you get to She job. would do for you. Uh, and that was that was one of her things she was doing for people. Helping helping out. 
she was honest about who what she felt if you was doing wrong is what you're talking about. She didn't hold back right. to tell you you right. shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Even even when it comes to raking leaves. <laughs> <laughs> They were George's leaves. I was just <laughs> trying to get them back to him. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> what, what, uh, what would you say best describes who you tried to be in life? Well, I tried to be myself. Yeah. That's all. I didn't try to be anybody that I wasn't. I was very fortunate that the Lord give me uh, the opportunity to have business. Uh, sometimes it was tough. Sometimes we didn't even know if we could make the payments on the trucks. But we hung in there, both of us. Without her, I don't know if I'd have made it or not, you know. But uh, we did we we did fairly well, you know. We managed a, a home, taking care of the kids. Uh, we always had a little bit, you know. Just like when we was in Orbany, we had that lake house. I think everybody loved the lake house. Uh. <laughs> well, Mom, Mom, you was a bit of a when it come to the business, you weren't. You were willing to take the risk to make your living, and Mom was kind of. Mom was kind of like, "All right, now we need to reel this back just a little bit. Let's not get too risky, right?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until it came to multi-level marketing stuff. Right, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> was but, but I will say this. When I got in, like when I finally got a job down in Atlanta, Lloyd Barnes got me the job down there. Right. And, of course, I had to buy the trucks, and I'd buy a truck. She never said a word about me if I had to buy a truck. She was always okay. You know what you're doing. You're 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 doing it. And she let you manage your career. She yeah. didn't tell you what to do. Yeah. And she said, she said, I don't know what you're doing. You do. <laughs> well, kind of change directions a little bit. What have you learned about other people in life? Are they trustworthy, kind, not, or mean, or, you know, what have you just learned about other people in general? Well, you know, there's, when you're talking about other people, you've got the good and the bad. Yeah. It's just like anything. The good and the bad, the ugly. Yeah. But I think for the most part, I've always been with the good. I've always met good people. And that helped you to succeed in your career, <laughs> didn't it? Being yeah. around good people, surrounding right. yourself with that kind of people. Yeah. Hard working people and Yeah. And and people that helped one another. Absolutely. When you say good people, I mean I went to it a little bit further that, that like you said, that guy sold you that truck. And yeah. He didn't have to do that. No, that's right. Well, that's just like Jim Goble and all the guys down the ladder. Look how, look how we work together all the time. And if somebody needs something. And you had it? Was right there. there? Yeah. Yep. What do you think the world needs more of right now? What? What do you think that the world needs more of right now? 
And there's a good question. Yeah. What are the three best decisions you ever made in your life? Marrying mom. Three times? Three times. Okay. <laughs> All three. Okay. What are you most proud of in your life? Marrying mom. Marrying mom. You can't go wrong with that answer, Dad. Is there a message that you'd like to share with us? Anything? No, I really think that you all pretty much know how we were, how we lived, and what we did, and uh, just be uh, be honest and uh, give the good Lord his. News. He's he's the uh, he's the one that took, got us where we're at. You know. My last question would be, what are you most thankful for? Uh, can you narrow it down? Yeah, I can. Uh, I, I'm most thankful that I had mom as long as I did. That says it all to us, I think. Yeah. And with that, my questions are done. If anybody else has any questions that you want to ask about anything. Can I have 20 bucks? <laughs> mom, go see mom. <laughs> I think she told me to come see you. <laughs> that was a constant, wasn't it? <laughs> I'd get 20 bucks for mom and I go to dad and said, Mom told me to give, that you needed to give me 20 bucks, dad. <laughs> I'd give him the $20. I don't know whatever I'd be doing to come in. <laughs> I'd say something about you and what he did what <laughs> <laughs> Yep, he did. My, my I have one question and that is do you know how much your family loves you? Oh, I'm not sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. I do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the tables and I'm gonna say, Billy, you asked each of us to say how you would describe Dad. I mean, how Dad would describe each of us. Each of you, how would you describe Dad when you tell somebody who Dad is? How do you describe Dad, Brenda? Oh my goodness, one of the kindest, most gentle, forgiving, loving. Grateful, hardworking man you will ever meet in your life. There's not enough words to say how I would describe Dad. You know, I'm I'll be 62 years old, and I've never heard my father utter. Well, you are 62. You will be 62. <laughs> she can't. Oh yeah. And who's the got the Alzheimer's? The Alzheimer's is setting in. But I, you know what? Okay, I'm 62 years old. I don't think that I have ever, ever in my life heard my father say one harsh word or anything hateful about any one person. Even when that person took advantage of him. He always was forgiving and yeah, I just yeah, there's just no words. Billy? She used all the big words, didn't she? She used all the big words, but when I think of dad, I think of all the opportunity that he gave me 
to become a better man. And some by example and some by, mostly by example, but by teaching me to drive a truck and to make a living, making my bite on the side when I needed it, it probably wasn't enough sometimes. <laughs> I know I wasn't, well, let's just say I was more than honorary. But when I think of Dad, Dad never got, if he did get mad at you, probably didn't know it most of the time. Right. And he was always there. He was always there. Always there. Even when he wasn't, he was there. You know what I mean? Yep. And he did get on to me one time. But I had it coming. I was a teenager. And I won't tell that for everybody. But he got my attention. <laughs> Right. I know you guys used all the good examples. Um, but yeah, I mean, Dad's always been there. I don't think I ever heard him raise his voice. Mm -mm. Get get really mad. Mm -mm. Which says a lot about his character. Absolutely. Ever? I always tell everybody that my dad has the most incredible work ethic and that by example he taught well, us that you can work hard and put your family first at the same time mm -hmm. and that you choose whether you're a success in life or not by what you choose to do. And I always say the same thing. Dad never got mad. And I remember one time when I was a teenager and Dad had the gas station. And I don't even remember what happened. And something happened and I was there. And I thought Dad should have gotten mad about what happened. And I asked him, I said, Dad, why didn't you get mad about that? And he just kind of laughed and he said, well, then I would have two problems. <laughs> He said, I would have the problem that may, would make me mad, and then I would be mad. And he said, so I can do away with one of those problems. And that taught me a lot, that how we choose to look at things, it is truly up to us. And that was how he chose to deal with things, was in kindness and, and gentleness and hard work. Just... Hard work. Know what it is, but it ain't important. <laughs> Dad is a caregiver. Mm -hmm. He took care of mom. <laughs> He lives to take care of people, and he has. I always say he's an Iron Man, too. Yeah. <laughs> My hero. Standing on tables and yeah. <laughs> trying, trying to fly. <laughs> There's not a person that's ever met dad that would have one bad thing to say about him. Yeah. 
And if they did, we don't care what they think anyway. That's right. <laughs> when we lived here, Reed went over to Mr. Tire in Independence. Dad sent him over there to get tires for Audrey. And Reed sat and talked to this old man. And this old man told him about this man that he used to work for, the nicest man he ever met that used to drive back and forth to California. And Reed said, uh, what was his name? And he said, Bill Cable. And Reed said, there ain't no way. And the old man said, why? And he said, because that's my father-in-law. There's no way you're talking about, do you remember that, Dad? That Reed come home and told you, I don't remember who the guy was, but Reed said, here I meet a total stranger at the tire store that knows your dad and drove with your dad, and it was awesome. I don't remember who it was. Neither Reed nor the guy could believe it. Okay. Thanks for sharing. That's it. <laughs> yeah. What? That's it. That's that. And that's a wrap. And that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. All right, course. That's all I have to say about that. Run, horse, run. <clears throat>